being a teenager isn't always easy, especially when you're not like everyone else. You know what a soci is? What? White trash with mustangs and magic. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 unconventional teen movies. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're looking at coming-of-age flicks that may or may not have achieved massive success, but don't follow the typical narrative of the teen movie genre. Let's get to the point, son. Will she see me again, yes or no? Number 10, Donnie Darko. 28 days. While most teenagers daydream of their crush, this film's hero has night terrors about a man in a rabbit costume named Frank. More of a psychological horror movie than an everyday high school flick, Donnie Darko stars Jake Gyllenhaal as a teenager plagued by doomsday visions after he narrowly misses death when a jet engine crashes into his bedroom. It dabbles in familiar teen movie tropes, like rebellion against authority and first love. By incorporating quantum physics and time travel into the complex plot, however, this cult success proves that teenager or not, we all truly inhabit a mad world. Mad. Number 9. Brick I got all five senses and I slept last night that puts me six up on the lot of you. Before traveling to a galaxy far, far away, Ryan Johnson first cut his movie-making teeth with this low-budget murder mystery. Centered on Joseph Gordon-Levitt as a high schooler uncoiling the twisted web of his ex-girlfriend's death, Brick draws heavily upon hard-boiled detective fiction and writers like Dashiell Hammett. What are you doing here? Just listening. Such dark subject matter being placed in such a familiar setting only amplifies the unsettling and suspenseful atmosphere of the film. As Gordon-Levitt's Brendan stumbles through the rumor mill of high school. Oh, and Brick? That's slang for a block of heroin. How's that for dazed and confused? I want to see the pin. Number 8. Election You just woke up this morning and suddenly decided to run for president? Elections have gotten pretty ugly in the early 21st century, which probably makes it tough to remember the innocent old days when student council posters lined the halls. That's where filmmaker Alexander Payne transports you back to, with this quirky comedy's rivalry between a go-getter student played by Reese Witherspoon and the social studies teacher who can't stand her, played by Matthew Broderick. Why are you lecturing me? While it's filled with the tropes of the genre, like the dim-witted jock and elaborate sabotage missions, Election is actually a lot deeper than that, satirizing the game of democracy in general. In fact, the author of the book the film's based on admitted his novel was inspired by the 1992 Bush vs. Clinton campaign. Who cares about this stupid election? Number 7. Ghost World Give me all your money, bitch! Whenever a comic book movie comes along, we suspect it will feature special effects and superpowers. But the only power Enid and Rebecca possess is the ability to make deadpan observations about the vapid consumer culture surrounding them. It's like the Taj Mahal of fake 50s diners. Based on Daniel Klaus's graphic novel, Ghost World isn't your standard teen fair. It takes place over the summer after graduation, where the best friends are no longer girls, but not yet women. They still act like children, though, prank calling a personal ad and shamelessly getting fired from their jobs. Look, I told you the manager was a total asshole. For its unerring ability to capture the anxiety and ennui of being stuck between two points in life, Ghost World is almost the anti-high school film. I graduated high school. How totally amazing. Number 6. Mommy Don't Jack too. Teenagers often struggle to relate with their parents, and this conflict is blown up in Mommy, the tale of a mother, Diane, trying to raise and homeschool her son, Steve, who suffers from extreme anger issues. Made by young filmmaking genius Xavier Dolan, who rose to fame after helming an autobiographical film about his own teenage years, this modern masterpiece puts a spin on the coming-of-age story by telling it through the mother's perspective and the future she envisions for her son that'll never become reality. Shot in a squared Instagram-ready ratio to emphasize the character's enclosed existences, the film also has moments of pure freedom. And like all great teen movies, a spot-on soundtrack. You gonna be the one that saves me. Number 5. Rushmore I'm sorry, did someone say my name? For some, being a teenager involves sexual discovery and lots of partying. Max Fisher, on the other hand, is concerned about going down as one of the greats in history. While he participates in an exorbitant amount of extracurricular activities at his private school, everything changes when Max falls in love with Rosemary, a first grade teacher who doesn't return his feelings. Has it ever crossed your mind that you're far too young for me? 
co-written by Owen Wilson, who was also expelled from prep school for having a lot of ambition that didn't exactly fall in the academic arena, it was audience's first intro to Jason Schwartzman, and a reintroduction to Bill Murray in a second career as a respected indie actor. Mm, I'm a little bit lonely these days. Number 4. Napoleon Dynamite. Gosh! Girls only want boyfriends who have great skills. It's hard to put a finger on exactly what's so special about Napoleon Dynamite, from its endless lineup of unforgettable quotes Tina, eat. to its final dance sequence. But the indie comedy shows the awkward underbelly of adolescence. One thing that makes it so different from other teen flicks is its lack of plot. It's mostly made up of scenes of Napoleon and his friends that don't go anywhere. But maybe that's because that's what being a teenager really feels like. What are you gonna do today, Napoleon? Whatever I feel like I wanna do. God! Either way, it started from a shoestring budget, worked its way into modern popular culture, and became an instant classic that would never get out of our lives and shut up. How was school? Worst day of my life? What do you think? Number 3. Heather's Dear Diary Heather told me she teaches people real life. If you thought the Ashleys from Recess were scandalous, just you wait until you meet the Heathers. When Winona Ryder's Veronica and Christian Slater's JD attempt to get back at this clique of girls, one of the Heathers accidentally winds up dead. Their suicide cover-up transforms killing yourself into the hottest new trend at Westerberg High School. Mischievous and ultra-violent, the screenwriter actually wanted Stanley Kubrick to take on the project, even paying homage to Full Metal Jacket with the opening cafeteria scene. Veronica. Finally. But even if it likens high school lunches to Vietnam War barracks, Heather struck a chord with audiences and remains an 80s classic. How very. Number 2. Carrie. No! Prom night is meant to be the magical grand finale of high school, but it becomes a bloodbath in Carrie. Based on Stephen King's novel about an outcast with telekinetic powers, Sissy Spacek broke into the mainstream with her spine-chilling portrayal of the tormented classmate who eventually snaps. <laughs> the movie makes horror sequences out of rites of passage in a young woman's life, like a first period or being crowned prom queen, and has been mimicked in popular media many times since. A stark message underlies the horror classic, however. Being cruel in high school can come back to haunt you. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Mother's lack of your son! You're not even old enough to know how bad life gets. Obviously, Doctor. You've never been a 13-year-old girl. Because you're, like, the coolest person I've ever met. And, and you don't even have to try, you know? Number 1. Rebel Without a Cause You're tearing me apart! What? You, you say one thing, he says another, and everybody changes back again! This iconic movie captures just how savage life as a teenager can be, and stars James Dean, Natalie Wood, and Sam Mineo as three teens from broken homes that form a bond with one another. Their friendship doesn't last long, however, as Dean's character is forced to hide after involvement in a drag race that kills a student who was bullying him. And I got out okay and Buzz didn't, and, uh... Killed him. This is sadly ironic, given the film's posthumous release following Dean's death in a car crash. Although it's titled Rebel Without a Cause, the picture has been widely studied for its depiction of the moral decay of American youth and their clash against the former generation in the decade following World War II. Nobody talks to children. No, they just tell them. <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and subscribe for new videos every day.